First of all, like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the algorithm. Um, I finally got around to trying to watch Captain Marvel. Uh, holy cow, that is boring. It is really, really boring. People say, oh, you know, I made a, bil a billion dollars. Um, press F to doubt. You know, I, I don't, I didn't, and I don't believe those conspiracy theories about uh, Disney buying up tickets and stuff. It's possible that a big company would do that, but it's also, uh, they don't want to risk the bad publicity and possibly, you know, problems with the Security and Exchange Commission if they do something like that. So it's probably not likely. It probably did make a billion dollars because Normies when, when saw it and it was nestled in between the two biggest movies in history. I, if I remember right, um, the uh, Avengers films, the last one I think was made for, its budget was like $400 million, partially because Robert Downey Jr.'s salary was $65 million. <laughs> And to be fair, it was an excellent film. Uh, so that's why Captain Captain Brie Larson, who looks like she's on Valium the whole film, made a billion dollars. Uh, it uh, I don't know if it sucked exactly. I didn't get all the way through it. Yeah, I'll watch it after this. But um, man, it is slow and dull, and it's like Brie Larson's face. It's weird. She's a a skinny girl, but she has a fat face, a fat, chubby little squirrel cheeks that I, I just want to, like, pinch or slap around or something. Uh, she doesn't uh, she doesn't emote. And maybe that's what the character's supposed to do, just not emote. But, man, it's really hard to watch that for, what is it, 90 minutes, two hours or something? Anyway. Uh, so, I suspect that Captain Marvel Part 2 will not make a billion dollars. Just a guess. I think... It feels like people are kind of getting tired of uh, superhero movies, Marvel. Anyway, I made this first uh, video on Gail Simone's The Death Defying Devil. And uh, it is on... I was on uh, BitChute. I'll put the link in the description. Because it, there's too many keywords that the algorithm picks up. There's a... Uh, uh, just too many, too many hot words <laughs> that uh, YouTube is very, very not cool with, and they'll just they won't send out notifications and they will bury the videos. You'll notice like some videos, say the average, say you're out, you make videos and the average video is uh, it gets 30 views, and then you get one with five views, and you know that the title is either something in the title or some some too many hot words in the video itself gets it gets it buried. I've had to. Um, I've had to re-upload videos because I I put a hot word in the title and it wouldn't send out notifications. So I, you got to like clip the last second off a of video, re-upload it, change the title. I don't understand why doesn't YouTube just tell you right off the bat, hey, you can't use certain words in the title. You can't use certain people's names and you can't use certain historical events in titles or we're going to bury the video. Why not just tell us that right up front? Like as soon as you type the word in, they should tell people, you know, when people get in the comments and they type spicy, spicy, sometimes people have done it in my comments. It'll say, it'll say, you know, three comments and you see two of them and you realize, well, one's hidden. You've got to put, you've got to put, you've got to show the comments in order and then it will show it because someone will use a hot word, a, a naughty word. But then why don't they just tell you as the commenter is typing the comment, as they're typing that hot word, give you a little pop warning like this comment will be hidden, this comment will be ghosted. Why not just be open and honest and tell people what's going on? Because it's YouTube, I don't know. BitChute is uh, so much freer. Anyway, I made the, the BitChute video. I'll see you can take take a look at it. This, those, are those double Ds? That's what it looks like, and it looks like he is wearing a bondage belt. Um from a Folsom Street power bottom character. This character is, uh, I was reading some comic from the 30s and the 40s the other night, and it had this guy in it, and then just pure coincidence, I found this, and I saw it had Gail Simone on it, and I just, it got as giddy as a little schoolgirl because Gail Simone is such a big, fat, racist idiot. And even saying that word, the R word, if you say that too many times, you get uh, buried. Uh, she is such an idiot <laughs> that I got excited when I saw it. And I know your boy already covered this comic, but that's fine. But uh, in my bitch shoot review, I say many, many things that Zach would never dare say. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, so this is the first cover that went on display, and I'm I don't know how many how many issues this kind of thing sells. I don't know, 10, 20? I have no idea. I have no idea. This is the second cover. Probably a better cover, I think. But uh, that costume looks really dated, man. It's from like, it looks like actually a lot like Harley Quinn, which is, you know, a different comic company entirely. Uh, it is just an old fashioned costume. It looks like you literally spray painted a naked body. Uh, my buddy calls them bundles of sticks in spandex except you know he uses another word but that's what it looks like it looks like they just spray him that's kind of a cool color but the, again the spike belt doesn't the guy need uh pouches and packs and you know he's got to carry stuff like what if he what if he wants to you know carry a bottle of water or something or what about a communication device everyone's got a smartphone uh, so you gotta have some kind of criminal database in it, or, or maybe some rope to rappel down a hill, a mountain, or something, or handcuffs to temporarily incapacitate somebody. I mean, that's why Batman has a utility belt because he's carrying so much crap around. Uh, that's a better cover. I don't. Kind of odd the cover choices they pick. Uh, anyway, so there's like, even that's not a bad cover. He's got a pair of boomerangs, but I think DC already has a character who uses boomerangs. Um, so where does he carry the boomerangs? I mean, there's literally, he does not have a pocket on this thing. Kind of a weirdly designed costume. Um, <laughs> okay, so introduce the first page. Is this the first page? Yeah, it's the first page with a wall of text with a, a, um, uh, disabled veteran who, uh, with missing a hand, but he's not wearing his prosthetic. Well, most times when you're missing a, a hand, you have a prosthetic on because it at least helps you uh, balance things and grab things. I mean, you, you don't have fine motor detail, but it helps you like use the prosthetic hand as a... You can still kind of use it to move things out of the way. Um, so it's kind of convenient to have it because your hands are meant to be... Your arms are meant to be the same length. But of, of course, Gail leaves it off for some reason. Okay, more text walls. And we have the Jesse Smollett situation. As soon as I got to this page, I just... Uh, you know how you see those Twitter comments? You see, shake my head, shake my damn head all the time. This is what it feels like. This is shake my head, the comic book. We have our purse puppy Latino angels. They're brown. They are Latinos. They are Beto and Yolanda. Remember Yo Yo Yolanda from South Africa. And then we have our purse puppies. And he almost looks African American here, but in the next few you'll see they're all blonde, except for the skinhead. And you may be wondering, why does uh, Yolanda and Beto, Roberto, why are they wearing headgear in the snow? Well, they're wearing headgear in the snow because it's cold and you lose 20% of your body heat through your head or something like that. You know, your head and hands, your feet, you got to keep those things warm, especially your head. So why are, <laughs> why are these um, blonde-haired criminals not wearing headgear to keep warm? Because the writer wants you to know that they are obviously not Hispanic. They are probably Germans. Because Germans, am I right? God, World War II was a long time ago, Gail. Okay, get over it. So they're blonde. Not only are they blonde, but they have blonde, a blonde mohawk. Later on in the book, you'll see they do wear ski caps. But because Gail needs you to know that they're probably German, the blonde hair pokes out from beneath the ski cap. If you look at American criminal activity, American gangs, American gangs are about 50% African American and about 50% Latino or Hispanic. Non-European Hispanic American. Gangs in America do not have blonde hair. This is a unicorn. There are, unless you're in Eastern Europe or Russia, you're not going to see roving gangs of blonde-haired people. If you have, if you have two groups of people, brown-skinned Hispanic Latinos, 
and lighter skinned blonde haired people um, 99 times out of 100 the Latinos are going to be robbing the blonde haired people that's called reality so why does Gail write this kind of stuff because she knows she can get away with it oh look he's got a skinhead it's in the snow and he doesn't have a beanie on or his hood up because they want you to know he's a skinhead even though he's probably freezing <sighs> this is so f this is so effing stupid I don't know who buys this garbage who buys it who buys into it I imagine Gail having an orgasm when she writes this stuff. Just all 300 pounds of J Gail just wobbling and jiggling like jello when she writes, I'm going to show those goddamn Trump supporters. Because Trump supporters, are, all the skinheads support Trump, right? Jesus, Gail. For these people, most of them aren't even white, Adventure Boy. Go home, this isn't your fight. Yes, since when have superheroes only defended white people? Oh, what's this, a racist, sexist police? Of course, of course. Of course he's racist, sexist. And the illegal aliens are calling the police, even though in, in their home country, uh, the police are completely corrupt and criminal. But you're calling the police because you have such a good experience in your home country with dealing with the police. Oh, no, wait, you don't. Because your home country, the police are garbage. Because your home country is a shithole. How can you say that? You're the policia. Well, maybe we just got better things to do, little mamacita. <sighs> of course. You know, uh, in a lot of police stations, people who are answering the phone, you're going to have a lot of African-Americans working as police. African-Americans are way, way overrepresented in, in police work. So how come you don't portray the African-Americans as being racist against uh, Hispanics? They are. Africans, uh, African-Americans and Hispanic-Americans have a, a lot of back and forth, a lot of heated rivalry sort of things, a lot of... A lot of issues between them. You'll never see those issues on paper. You'll never, never see those issues uh, with someone like Gail Simone. Because they're both angels. Gail Simone hates these white devils so much. And there is so little, there's so little of this kind of white gang activity, European American activity, that she has to Jesse Smollett the situation. She has to create a straw man that her characters can knock down. Because it doesn't it doesn't have the appearance of truth. We know there aren't these roving gangs of blonde haired people. You know this, I know this, Gail Simone knows it. Oh, this one character, this uh this dirty old whore, she is a uh, self, she's Gail Simone's self insert. Because here's one here's one thing I've noticed about Gail Simone's writing. Uh she actually can write well she chooses not to. But one thing she can do, and she does do, is she is a dirty, dirty girl sometimes. She writes these, so she'll include these kind of graphically sexual jokes, uh, which you think are funny, and then you take a look at Gail Simone. Please, please do a Google Earth search of her image, and then imagine her writing sexy jokes. Uh, it just kind of sucks the humor right out of it when you see that. Your grandma is writing these jokes. Your 300-pound grandma is writing sex jokes. And here's a little trope. Let me clue you in on. When you see a little brown girl, she's going to have an IQ greater than Stephen Hawking. Uh, she's probably doing particle physics in her brain. She's working out the uh, wave particle duality without a computer because she's brown. And don't you know, brown girls are uh, super geniuses, all of them. Except in the areas where they go around your neighborhood stealing Amazon packages. They're, um, they're super geniuses, other than the Amazon package thieving. Everybody here has a terrible secret. Yeah, they're in a shitty comic book. And they try not to kill themselves. This house, it's lonely. 
I have to go. Mommy's calling, but maybe that one's for the owies. I'll come back and talk to you if my parents say it's okay when they're not beating me and putting out cigarettes on me. Uh, Zach read this, and he said, This comic <laughs> put an owie on his soul. I've seen this kind of comic so many times. I don't even have to look that hard to find find these types of comics. White is bad, brown is good. Even though our personal experience is that European Americans are pretty freaking awesome. They don't com commit a lot of violent crime, even though they're the majority of the population. Say they're 60% of the population, they do not commit 60% of the violent crime. You freaking know this. These white devils do not go door to door in gangs no takers bad choice squatters i'm a count to five then we come in the there are no white gangs in like this in america because the hispanic gangs and the african gangs would kill them there are very very few european american gangs there are a few crystal meth gangs on bikers and stuff like that. And admittedly, they are some very, very bad, uh, very, very bad hombres. But they're freaking rare. Uh, in argument, it's called a false equivalent. When you're comparing the likelihood of you getting robbed by a, a blonde-haired gang compared to a Hispanic gang, the odds are a thousand times greater you will be robbed by a Hispanic gang. The odds are 2,000 times greater you'll be robbed by a African-American or African-American gang. This is unbelievable levels of horseshit. Sorry for swearing. Okay, these are the alternative covers um, because the book is in such demand. Okay, now these, are the, these are the covers they put out there. Oh my God, that's a lot of covers. And to be honest, none of them are, none of them are stellar. None of them are great. Oh, the version cover without the trade dress? That's that's cool. That's okay, but I mean... Uh, it's a dated character. None of the covers are great. The costume is just kind of bizarre. It's got this... That bonded sadomasochism belt. And that's probably... Some words you can't say on YouTube. And there's one of them. So anyway, so they, they did even more covers. But this time, instead of where you see red... They just did a color swap, palette swap... Uh, swap for um, reds for blues and that kind of thing. Okay, I guess it looks okay. The moon in the background looks okay, but none of these covers jump out because the character is just so old-fashioned. Nobody's into it. Nobody's into Gail Simone. Gail Simone stuff isn't... Um, it doesn't sell as well as it used to because I think people are getting tired of this... This uh, this is Max Bemis. God, he is another... He is a far, far left um, Kurt Busiak resist type of guy. You know, just a Trump derangement syndrome has gone up his ass and come out his mouth. These people are insane with Trump derangement syndrome. I understand not liking Trump, not liking Obama, not liking Hillary or Bernie, whatever. But um, to make it, to have it make you go insane. What is the, uh, what is the serenity, serenity prayer part of it is... Uh, Accept the things you cannot change. Change the things you can and have the wisdom to know the difference. Well, you know, Obama got elected for eight years. Trump is going to get elected for eight years. He's almost certainly going to win re-election. So your next best chance to put the guy you want, or the girl you want, if you like Kamala Harris that much, is in 2024. That's your best odds. If you're in the DNC, you're generally on the left, that's your time to gear up. Don't let it make you insane. You can't do anything about it. The economy is good. More African Americans own homes under Trump than they do under Obama. More African Americans are employed under the Trump administration than under Obama. Trump met with Kim Un to avert atomic war. You gotta give the guy some credit. I realize his personality is dog shit, but dog shit people can be good leaders, and he is an effective leader. Get over it. So this kind of um, woke brown people, bad white people, 
it's nonsense. We all know it's nonsense. It's just... At some point, I make these videos because I want other people to start making videos calling out this kind of anti-white racism. This is uh, what the Jews experienced in the 30s is what European Americans are going through now. Uh, I realize, oh, Bianca, how dare you? How dare you make that comparison? Yes, I dare because it's the same thing. Uh, they're even changing, trying to change language to dehumanize European people and European Americans. They're trying to dehumanize people with light skin, the people of the light, the blonde haired people. They're trying to make them less than human so they can take rights away from them and put them on the trains. Oh, they'll never do that. They did it in the 30s and the 40s to the Jews. They can do it again to the Europeans. Yes, it can happen if we don't wake the fuck up and stop it. Anyway, this kind of stuff is cancer, and it doesn't sell, and they will keep making it, and I will keep reviewing it, and I hope more of you people start making your own YouTube channels and start calling this cancer out. Call it out. Don't just let it go by. Call it out. Say, hey, this is racism. You're being racist against these blonde people. To hear the facts of the matter. Then you have to go in and admit the elephant in the room is that it's not blonde-haired people causing these violent crimes. That's the elephant in the room. It's not people who look like this. It's people who look like this. Anyway, uh, this obviously pissed me off. An unbelievable amount. Uh, and I, this is the YouTube version. The bit shoot version has even more foul language on it and certain hot words that you can't say on YouTube. But I swore on this one and I'm trying not to swear on YouTube, so sorry about that. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all the next episode.